especially from our social media clients and our marketing clients. Um, but we wanted to we wanted to talk about this topic because it's what we want to talk about is it's all about managing expectations regarding viral posts mm -hmm. and the reality of how viral posts actually become viral posts. So, you know, as a spot owner, you wear a lot of hats. Um, you know, there's a leadership hat with your clients and your team members. If you have a team, there is your, you know, financial hat to manage all your money. And then of course you have to wear your marketing hat. And so because you wear so many hats, we also realize you aren't able to actually be a subject matter expert in each of these areas. So it's not, it's, it doesn't surprise us that our clients and we hear this being asked and discussed on, on uh, in Facebook groups with uh, spa owners about how do I make a viral post? I need to make a viral post. I need, I want more eyeballs on a post. Let's make a viral post. Yeah. <laughs> so um, before we dig into like how to do that, I want to share a little story about a coaching client I had. Actually, it was a social media client. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because I really want to just talk about the first piece about this is your expectations about a viral post. So my, my social media client at the time uh, was very insistent that we create a viral post as part of her uh, monthly social media management. Mm -hmm. And... Um, when she asked that, I realized uh, that she really does not understand how viral posts work because they certainly don't work by deciding to create a viral post and then posting it. <laughs> so it meant I can, I realized, okay, I need to have a conversation with this client about, um, about our expectations and about the reality of a viral post. Mm -hmm. So you know, the, the reality is, is that they happen by chance. Um, it's the right message. It's the right creative and creative meaning uh, image or video. It's about the copy, like how you're saying it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it has to do with like getting the right audience and especially about getting the right timing. And the timing we're talking about is like what's happening in the world, what's relevant for people um, right now. Yeah. So um, Delia, I want you to kind of take take it from here because we're going to dig into a little bit more about kind of what's mm -hmm. happening with viral posts. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, the, the biggest piece here is that just in general and, and when you're trying to craft, like trying to craft a viral pose, it's become an art form and it's <laughs> people spend hours and hours strategizing and working on building their social media and connecting with their audience. And, you know, it's not that it's one particular thing that they've done that's make them gone viral. It's an accumulation of things that can by chance make something go viral. So we're not saying that your post can't go viral, but it is by chance. There but, are, and you, some... and you have to have like, you have to have a really good, basis in your social media. Management. Yeah, there's some best practices that, you know, we've talked about many, many times, and you need to have some of those best practices working for you already so that you are being shown to people. If you aren't active on your social media, or, you know, if maybe you need a little bit of tweaking in your strategy, what happens is the algorithms are kind of looking at what you're posting, and they're going to decide whether this content that you're posting is relevant and whether it's going to be popular or not. So if you're not already doing yourself, you know, uh, justice by, um, you know, consistently posting, uh, making sure that you are posting relevant content that's to your ideal client, um, you're talking about, um, you know, current events that your ideal clients are going through, um, you're being consistent with your posts and Consistency meaning you have a regular schedule that you're posting on. You're not just posting one week and then leaving it for a month or a few weeks. You have a regular strategy and a, and a schedule that you're posting on. Um, and then, you know, we've talked about making sure that like your, your marketing message, it's strong, it creative, you got to have some, um, you know, some hooks to your headlines or to your, your opening captions to make people want to be interested um, in your stuff. So when you're, when you're putting all of your marketing, your social media strategy together, you're kind of doing a mix of all of that. And we've talked about, you know, how we do that in our business. Um, but if you already don't, aren't already doing that then going viral is going to be even harder because it already is by chance. So you, we want to make sure that if you are looking to, you know, hopefully have some viral content, 
it, it's not just going to happen just because you want it. It needs to happen because you've put some effort and time and energy into, um, you know, making making your social media an ongoing presence and awareness that people are already seeing. And, so, and, and playing the way that Meta, Facebook and Instagram, mm-hmm wants mm-hmm. you to play with their platform. Yes. <laughs> so if you're not doing, if you're just doing posts and not mm-hmm. even doing any stories, yeah, you're not mm-hmm. playing how Instagram wants you to play. So they just won't serve up your content as much. But if yeah. you're posting um, consistently, you're doing stories, you're doing a free, a few reels, you're, you're doing engagement sprints, um, then Instagram is happy with you and will more likely serve up your, you know, possible viral content easier or better. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the thing with viral, it's, it's, it take it's just one, it takes one post to go viral and it takes it to go viral by, again, having that post relevancy, having people interested in the image or your video that you're sharing. And then that's when people start liking, sharing, commenting, right? And that's what starts building up that kind of viralness. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I guess so to too, you know, when, when people do have a viral post mm-hmm. and, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, big beauty coming up with a viral post. We're talking about, you know, your everyday spa owner having a viral yeah. post. Yeah. Um, You know, a lot of that, I think, too, has to do with your own creativity and creativity happens sometimes when you're inspired and creativity definitely happens when you have time to be inspired. Mm -hmm. So that's the other little bit of a wild card with a viral post is your own creativity and how that is going to be shown up in, in a post. Yeah, for sure. All right. So I want to get back to my client, that little story that I was talking about. So, you know, once we had a little... Um, a little conversation about the realities of, you know, creating a viral post. I didn't say that we couldn't do that, but what I I had to tell her was that, you know, we have your social media uh, management service, monthly service. Um, We can do that or we can create a viral post. So it's going to take time and a lot of effort and energy of our social media managers to do the research, you know, come up with the creative Um, So it wasn't, I couldn't say, yes, we can do a viral post because it takes, it's a project on its own. It -hmm. takes a lot of effort and research and creativity to craft something like that. And still, you're not even sure whether it will actually pan out because then you have to test it out and tweak. So that's kind of where that wild card of creativity um, Mm -hmm. comes in. So you know, she, in the end, she said, oh, okay, now I understand. (laughs) No, I still want my monthly social media management service as usual. And, you know, she said, I'm going to, I'll think about kind of some ideas for a viral post. Maybe we'll work on that later. Mm -hmm. Um, It didn't end up happening because, um, you know, she didn't really have a whole lot of time to, to do that. And um, she just kind of put her focus in a different way um, with her marketing. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, like, we, we can, we can't create a viral post because there's no guarantee, but that extra time for that project, it would have been creating posts that we would be testing mm-hmm. out to see what was going to work. And so, you know, like I said, that's a whole project in itself that's going to take away from other things. Yes. So, and it can happen, it can happen, but let's go back to the topic of timing. Yeah, <laughs> that's really, it's, you know, there's a bunch of wild cards in, yeah. in what, yeah, what, there's, viral post exactly so I just want to share another um, client story Um, and she wasn't it wasn't for her social media but it was for google ads that she was running and she was running them on her own so she didn't have an ads manager um, doing it for her and I think she was this is at the beginning of the pandemic for her e-commerce shop so skincare line e-commerce um and so she created an ad for her skincare line that she carries and, you know, set it and kind of walked away and, and came back to it um, shortly after, after starting it. And she saw that <laughs> her sales were amazing. She was shocked at how, how amazing they were and she didn't really have anything to compare it to, but it was pretty substantial. So it stood out. But what she had discovered, and this is why I want to talk about the topic of timing, and unbeknownst to her, what she had discovered was that uh, the skincare line that she was advertising for 
had actually been featured in a major women's um, magazine, national women's magazine. And so they were doing a little write up on this particular skincare line. And so she was able, so people were searching for this, this skincare line now, thanks to this magazine. So the timing of her ad and the timing of when the magazine came out was perfect timing. And she was able to ride on the coattails of that to get amazing results. She still has those ads running that, that, ad is not running or sorry that um magazine article is is older now so so she still has that ad running and it shows that it was in correlation to to that ad coming out so they would have performed well without it they wouldn't shoot like with her diy doing her ads but she likely wouldn't have hit that um scale of her sales without being lined up with the release of the article so that's what we're talking about. You know, it has to be relatable to what's happening. It's got to connect with, you know, maybe some other, like I said, it's kind of that wild card. She didn't know that was happening, but it worked to her advantage and you can't predict that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're saying like, yes, things can go viral. Yes. Certainly things do go viral, but there isn't like, you can't sit down and say, I'm making this post today. Go viral. Yeah. (laughs) Like don't just do yourself a favor and like, just let that worry or idea or thought go away (laughs) that today I'm going to make something viral or my goal is to make something viral. Well, I just, you know, I just, and it's, it's perception as well too. I just want to, you know, kind of bring this in. And we were talking to another client the other day and for our social media, we um, run uh, organic social media. We do have some uh, people on our team that do ads as well, but for the most part, we're, we're working on social media and she had said something like, you know, I know that the growth, uh, like followers meaning has been slow. And we were like, actually it hasn't. <laughs> Both of us kind of went ahead to like, yeah, huh? it what perception <laughs> perception was that, you know, organically, she maybe just thought that, you know, it's a slower, slower growth. When in reality, I think her, um, stats are tripled from is it triple. I think they were triple. Uh, three times higher than what the average is as far as organic growth goes, but she didn't understand that. So we just had to, you know, we just had to share, share how, you know, growth works and what the actual percentages and benchmarks are. Um, but she had this perception that it wasn't when in the meantime, it really, really was. So you can't kind of, you can't go based off of what other people are doing or what they, you know, it looks like they're going viral and you're not, and you're sitting there going, well, why am I not <laughs> doing this? They're probably not. And if they are, they've, you know, maybe put some things in place ahead of time to make that happen. And they've or, just, or not, and or they not. Have to just, <laughs> just, or they're just in the right place at the right time in front yeah. of the right audience and had the right messaging and it just blew up. So yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, really to that end, um, you know, they're, there's no magic formula to mm-hmm. make a, a social media post go viral. And so if we hooked you in with our headline today uh, <laughs> about how to make your social media posts go viral, we are really glad we did hook you in because the intention was to help manage your expectations as well as help understand how viral posts actually work. So mm-hmm. you can you know, you just once you have that um, um, a more wise perception of what's happening and how you can do things, you can make um, better decisions and stop worrying about things that you don't yeah. need to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's it for us for uh, Spa Business Mastery, a little bit shorter today, but um, we, we wanted to keep it short and sweet about viral posts. Now, Kirsten, have- let's, let's, let's post this podcast and make it go viral. <laughs> If you've had a uh, like a post go viral, yeah, tell us about it. We're we're super super curious how it worked for you, um, you know what the circumstances were, and you know when we we hear, you know we in the industry, other estheticians, other spot owners, when we hear about these stories, it helps to manage everybody's expectation in the industry. So um, if you are watching this. Um, on YouTube and you've had a viral post, leave a comment. We'd love to know. Um, If you are watching or if you're listening to this on uh, any of the podcast channels, I don't think there's anywhere that you can leave a comment, but you can certainly uh, send us a message, uh, Kirsten at KirstenFoss.com via email. Um, And we're on social media, Instagram, as well as Facebook. So that's it for us. Have a wonderful few weeks and then I will be back in two weeks with uh, some spa business um, training at the next podcast. Sounds great. See you then. (laughs) Bye. All right.